looky here. A little bit of hurricane damage on the trail. Finally woke up. I had a beard. I, I think I slept 48 hours. And then I had to unprep the house. <laughs> I spent as much time unprepping the house as I did prepping the house for the hurricane. I don't know. It was it's kind of funny. Yeah, look at the flooding along here. I don't know if you knew. We're getting the double whammy here in Florida. But the uh, Now that the hurricane's gone, all of that water has flowed into the rivers. And houses that did, <laughs> didn't flood with the storm are now getting flooded by the, by the hundreds. And... Uh, just crazy you know you don't even I mean I knew that there would be some flooding but I had no idea the amount of rain that came down in a brief period of time you know and we're not I don't think we're hit as hard as as uh, North Carolina but uh, you know anybody that loses their house to flooding you know think about it all of that stuff unless it's a two-story house which we have very few here in Florida then you're gonna have to, to get rid of all your furniture, a lot of your memorabilia. I've seen some videos of people walking down streets. Uh, one other thing that was crazy was the fact that uh, a lot of people from Hurricane Helene had had all of their debris out by the curb to get picked up. And I didn't know that southern, well, the, just south of the Tampa Bay area, Sarasota, and you know there's some towns down there. I didn't know they got hit so hard by Helene, and so they had flooded then. So all that debris was out in the uh, in the streets when uh, Helene came th or uh, ah shit the storm you know just came through. Mal yeah, yeah. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. Eleventh, twenty twenty four. Let's get into it. All right, so all the talks about whether Israel's gonna strike Iran and, and what, what actually took place. And uh, so I've got some more facts for you. You know, I showed you the video from, I think it was two or three days ago. <laughs> it's all a blur for me at this point after working on the hurricane. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, 32 ballistic missile strikes, we believe. Uh, the accuracy was within a thousand meters just about give or take so you know they weren't it wasn't pinpoint accuracy but that's still pretty good of the 32 uh, some some of those struck in just open areas and did did no damage but the damage that gets done in the government doesn't understand you know when the Democrats lips are moving they're lying. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking to a Democrat, just know that if he's citing any facts or anything, or telling you, uh, there's no, uh, there's no illegal aliens in the country. Yeah, they're lying. So anyway, the damage that the government did was, you know, they said that none of the missiles got through. Israel was saying that none of the missiles got through. Look, you don't have to lie. You know, you can always say we are assessing things or. We don't know at this point. You know, you don't have to, because they already knew. You know, they got the satellite imaging and everything. So when they came out and said nothing got through, that the Iron Dome was the epitome of, of efficiency, that's a lie. So since uh, I'm done talking about Israel versus Iran, let's, uh, let's hit on Lebanon for just a minute. I found a, a video on RT. I want you to know what's going on in Lebanon because the, uh, the extermination that took place in Gaza is now moving on to Lebanon. The Democrats, they want all Arabs dead. <laughs> and I don't know why the Muslims are going to vote Democrat. You know, they just vote against their own self-interest. You know, isn't it amazing? I mean, look, I was, Sean Hannity was talking about, or it was, uh, it was a guest that he had on. He was talking about the cities. And the cities were... The Democrats have banned guns. Those are the most violent. In fact, let's let's start with a video from the Babylon Bee. <laughs> this is their new movie, January 6th. Can you name even one day that was deadlier than January 6th? Yeah, any weekend in Chicago. Can you name two days that are worse than January 6th? 
January 6th, the most deadliest day. Streaming exclusively on BabylonBee.com. Can you name even one day that was deadlier than January 6th? Yeah, Emmy weekend in Chicago. Can you name two days that are worse than January 6th? January 6th, the most deadliest day. Streaming exclusively on BabylonBee.com. It's been over three years. Our democracy, it died that day. But the Babylon Bee put together a team. A team that would avenge our democracy. To help us never forget to. Remember. Jewish space laser! Dodge! Phantom Zone! Quick follow-up question. Why are you evil? Shame! I love Trump. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Did Trump supporters break this potted plant? You just did that. January 6th, the most deadliest day. Streaming exclusively on BabylonBee.com. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, the heat death of the universe. These are some of the deadliest days in history. But none of them compare to the most deadliest day. January 6th, 2021. Coming soon. In the most epic movie event since Robot Jocks left behind, or maybe even Son of the Mask, the Babylon V investigates the darkest day in the history of democracy. Where were you on January 6th? In January? I don't remember. Storming the Capitol, baby. No, 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 no. Scary stuff like this happened. So on a scale of 9 to 10, how terrifying was what you just witnessed? Three? I don't know. We go on location. We bring you 100% true facts. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was murdered over seven times. We ask the tough questions. Is it true that you have a Jewish space laser? This is incredibly boring. Could you explain it to me using Marvel characters? We even go face to face with the scariest criminals you'll ever meet. Are you the the dangerous insurrection man? Who's asking? We're in. Into the lair of darkness I go. Darkness because of the, because he's a Republican, not because he's, you know. Shame! Shame! This fall, the only way you can save democracy is by becoming a member of the Babylon Bee. So you can see January 6th, the most deadliest day. Where were you on January 6th? I was in that mob that was going into the Capitol. January 6th, the most deadliest day. Streaming exclusively on BabylonBee.com. All right, so that was the Babylon Bee. Now let's get the video up from RT about Lebanon. Washington, D.C. is being bombed every night. 60 million Americans have to flee their houses, quarter of the nation. Uh, Texas is being targeted. Strikes in Washington State and in New York, would you consider that a limited operation? What we continue to see is a limited, uh, limited in scope uh, in terms of ground operations. As far as their broad uh, efforts against Lebanese Hezbollah, uh, again, we continue to have conversations with our Israeli partners in terms of the size and scope of what they're doing, recognizing, again, as we've highlighted, uh, the importance of you know not only enabling the defense of Israel, but also thinking through what's next in terms of regional security and stability, taking civilian safety uh, into account in terms of planning and operations. Um, and, and so we'll continue to have those conversations with them. I think it's always been a case of, of the tail wagging the dog. But it's become much more pronounced lately 
In any case, I think, you know, US officials, they are so good at obscuring what they actually mean at the double speak, at just deflecting questions, at not answering, at not even facing reality. These people live in a fantasy land in which, uh, in which up is down and, uh, you know, right is left. And uh, everybody else knows what's happening. Everybody knows, everybody else recognizes what is happening in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in Syria. Uh, Israel, how is Israel the victim when they're bombing at least four countries on a regular basis? It, it just doesn't add up. Exhaustion, sleep deprivation and anxiety. This pretty much sums up the past month for those that have been living in Lebanon. My team and I have been there. We've witnessed firsthand the constant attacks and the bombardment carried out by the Israeli military. The Air Force has been pounding the Lebanese capital for weeks. There was neither water nor electricity. There was nothing. We were trapped there. They targeted the building, the people. They targeted everything. Gaza has been obliterated, and we said, maybe the same thing will happen here. They'll bomb everything, so it's better to just escape. For the last week or two, inside our house, we felt all those bombs that have been dropped continuously. No sleep or anything. We just sit awake until the morning. You can only sleep when the drones go away. It is impossible to sleep. Up until this point, more than 100, if not 120 or 130 towns and villages in the south of the country have been ordered to evacuate by Israel. At this point, people have been rushing to find shelter and refuge to the point that foreign missions across the world are trying their best to evacuate their nationals in an attempt to provide safety and security for them. The Turkish military intervened. They provided naval ships and warships to ensure that evacuation took place. We were among the people that were evacuated. Hundreds of people, dozens and dozens of families over the course of three days made their way to the Turkish shore. The journey in and of itself was demanding to the point where we have been averaging two, maybe three hours of sleep on average per day. The overall chaos that people left behind is something that they've been able to carry with them. Throughout the journey across the Mediterranean, we had very little to no access to cellular networks. That meant no internet, no data, no information coming in, and no information coming out. But what's important here is while my team and I, while the members of the press were overlooking the general scene, there was an announcement while we were on the ship provided by the ship's captain stating that we had just entered Turkish waters. And unprecedented, there was a huge uproar, people essentially applauding the fact that they had arrived within the Turkish shores and that they were finally safe from the Israeli air raids. Okay, we got that. And uh, I'm gonna stop here in a bit and go through uh, a lot of my ex posts and we'll get you the rest of the story of what's going on around the world. All right, let's get this on the video. By the way, that 32 strike was just on that one air base. Starts with an N, Nystrom Air Base, the biggest air base in, in near Tel Aviv. But look at that moon, isn't that cool? And I've seen uh, I've seen two eagles so far, which is pretty cool. I wish I could have gotten them on the video, but well, one was a hawk, excuse me, and then the other one. Uh, well, I can't say it was an eagle. It was. There you go. What kind of bird is that? See it? Uh, you see, it's got some white. That's the second one of those I've seen. All right, we'll get to making the video here in just a second. 